Hi, this is Ashley Swartz, CEO of Furious Minds. This is my weekly segment for Beat. Uh, so I want to talk about some news from last week. Today is the 30th of June, it's July already. And last week uh, on the 25th, there were some interesting announcements made out of a few events. The first one was the death of Aereo, which is pretty substantial, right? Because a lot of folks thought that Aereo was going to be the death of television as we know it, right? It was the citizens crying out and rallying and the solution of sort of having circumvented and disintermediated the cable operators by finding a loophole with the free over-the-air rights, right? So last Wednesday, uh, the 25th, basically the Supreme Court said, uh, sorry, uh, so bye-bye Aereo. And the reason they gave is that Aereo was acting like a cable operator, bundling sort of, you know, co content owners properties, but not actually paying them license rights. They didn't see them as a technology play, which was their defense and why they had sort of gotten through the previous court of appeals uh, thus far to, to the Supreme Court. I've said this before, but I'm kind of having a deja vu, right? It feels a little bit like Napster in 1999, where they were shut down by the record industry, actually, not the music industry, because the music industry is alive and thriving. It's just reinvented itself. But what's interesting is the record industry is now dead, still having won that battle. Huh. When you fight technology instead of embrace it, the long tail of sort of sustainable and, and defensible growth is usually quite difficult. And that's kind of, I'm wondering if we're going to see a repeat of this, right? Uh, but what is interesting is that this may open up some sort of further opportunities uh, for new and innovative companies coming in trying to disrupt the legacy television infrastructure. This is all in the midst while what's happening in the background is we potentially have the sort of um, development of a duopoly or basically two t operators owning 60% of the market, right? If the AT&T and Direct deal goes through and the Time Warner or Comcast deal goes through, they basically have 60% market share, which will put a ton of pressure on content owners. But this may open up some retrans rights, right? There are some other things sort of expected to come out of this that that's fine if you're saying we can't leverage the over-the-air rights to actually distribute um, and aggregate content, then we should be able to license it directly on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And this is all in the midst while there's a lot of pushback, specifically Cablevision just took Viacom to court, because a lot of the bundling and the fact that we have to take sort of 70 to 80 channels typically when we actually get a cable subscription is because of the content owners, because they make a disproportionate amount of margin off of their second sort of cable networks, i.e. NBC's sci-fi network versus NBC, uh, given the cost of content to produce on their typical broadcast networks and the cost of things like news and sports and those rights. The other thing is interesting is while all this is going on, we have companies like Verizon deploying, uh, you know, on Q's technology, which is a pure play over the top solution. And as we see this happening with legacy endemic players, there's an MFN status where where one has over the top rights, they all get over the top rights, right? So I want to talk about something else. That's the death of TV. What's going to save TV? You know, we got to also mention the announcements last week, which is Android TV. You know, Google TV sort of died on the vine. It didn't work. Google's the enemy of the other television industry, but now we have Android TV, right? And it's really just basically um, sort of a Google OS or an Android OS deployed to multiple devices. At the same time was announced Android Auto, Android Smartphone, Android Television, et cetera, right? And what we have is sort of now Google is saying they're going to retain the UI and sort of create this ubiquitous experience across every device on which the OS is deployed and not allow OEMs to reskin it, which is one of the reasons that I think Google TV failed is every OEM's interpretation of Google TV sort of was a colossal um, user experience. But let's just talk for a second about Google Android's penetration glo globally. According to IDC in Q1 2014, Android is 81.1% of the smartphone market, right? I know we're talking about TVs, but this is important. Uh, and iOS is only 15.2%. The Android TV is sort of a, a cloud-like experience where the smartphone is connected to any other device with the Android OS over the cloud, right? You can easily tether and sling information. It sort of mimics a Chromecast experience, but you don't need that peripheral device if the TV's OS is Android. Let's just look at what I think is going to save television. I'm putting some, some sort of uh, thoughts out there. Maybe it's gaming that's going to save TV because the reality is that 46% of teens this lost Gen Z and the millennial generation, which we think is never going to get a cable subscription, are playing games on mobile devices. And with Android OS on a television, 
pretty much easily any developer can simply use the same uniform SDK and deploy that game on a bigger screen and simply optimize it for a high definition experience at 10 feet, right? I mean, this is incredible. 29% of people that came were over 50 globally and 49% are, uh, are women. Like these difficult to reach audiences now may actually be drawn back to the big screen in the living room because of Android OS and because gaming and an app environment is enabling that ubiquity. Um, in the US, 49 million people alone play games on their phone, right? And I'm using that sort of as an interesting point of reference because Android to me is the anchor that will sort of sling or dovetail onto what happens in this new world of television experience. Look, globally gaming is a tw is estimated to be a $24 billion market by 2016, right? And of that sort of 98% of the 1.2 billion gamers globally play on their mobile devices. And so what I'm wondering, and I sort of have to ponder, is that if we look at Aereo, is that going to create a new market where there's a throwback to hardware, where people are going to sort of their Walmarts or their Radio Shacks and buying the, the antennas for on the wall because they've all realized that a free over-the-air loophole, even in high definition, and they don't need to buy a Boxy anymore or a Roku. Um, or, you know, is this also going to create sort of an interesting second coming of what it actually means on the television for apps? Because we've said that apps are dead and apps are, you know, never going to work on TV. But if ubiquitous iOS actually allows for the sort of uniform fluidity of content across multiple devices, apps may actually have a comeback which is quite an interesting proposition to consider and how that could act as an accelerate for the content uh, commerce that occurs as part of television as a sort of larger extended ecosystem, right? Um, I don't know what the answer is, but I'm really excited to find out. And I do actually have a little bit of hope that Android television comes off and uh, Google under learns from its previous mistakes and actually mails the user interface and an SDK that is uniform and easy to deploy and optimize specifically across devices. Happy for your comments. Thanks.